Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Robert Cartier, or Cartier, de depending on how it's pronounced. If it's the same as the spelling on the famous Swiss watch, it's Cartier, but uh, that's okay. Maybe he doesn't consider himself a Smith uh, Swiss watch considers himself a ham radio operator, in which case we call him KD1JG. So, Robert, here we go. Uh, this question has to do with a ballon he has, and he's concerned about the common mode currents um, reducing into, uh, getting back into his shack. He does not state the exact type of antenna that he's dealing with. I'm going to assume it's a long wire, okay? The perfectly valid antenna. Now, what he is doing is putting, I think, a four to one ballon uh, at the end of his coax and then the beginning of the long wire. Now, uh, that's great. Uh, you're gonna end feed that long wire. It's not a balanced point, so you want an un untyped ballon. And you can get that easily enough. Um, I like from Ballon Designs or, you know, through DX Engineering or HRO or your favorite uh, ham radio store, uh, you can find these Ballons. Now, the thing is that he's concerned about that the Ballon, being an unun, is connected to the shell of the coax. And the Ballon is trying to push everything this way, but it's not working against absolute ground. So it's going to be pushing some stuff back the other way. And the only way that it has to go, in most cases, is the coax. Um, and you can run into a problem that you're going to get induced currents on the outside of the coax. Let's take a look at coax. Okay, coax, usually black. And it's like this. And out of the middle of it, if this is the white interior, out of the middle of it protrudes the center conductor, usually copper, okay? And then this is foam dielectric, and then inside this here, inside is a shield, and depending on your coax, what that shield is, but there's a braided part, sometimes there's a foil part, and so on. Now this, although it looks like two wires, it actually can be three. Apologize for using green. I know some people are green colorblind. Um, the RF to the antenna is contained entirely inside the coax. So you don't have to worry about what goes on out here. You can coil it up. You can do anything you want. But the... Uh, inside of the shield acts as one wire, the center conductor acts as another. Unfortunately, if there's power kicked back, it can travel down the outside of the shield. It's almost like there are three conductors here, the inside of the shield, the outside of the shield, and the center conductor, and they behave a little bit independently of each other. So let's look now at the antenna configuration that we're talking about. Okay, he's got a, a 4 to 1 ballon, and he's going to end fed an antenna. Okay, that's fine. Normally for this, if this is uh, cut to a resonant length, uh, you'd want a 49 to 1 unun here. Uh, but if he does... Whatever he does, it, it, it will still work. Then he's got the coax coming here. And the problem is that this is going to act like a counterpoise. Now, you even if you look at these balance here, um, they are, this is what's inside. There's a coil, which is a toroid form. And the coil around it is like this. Okay, this tap point to the center, this right here is the braid, and I, I guess I should say inner braid. 
Okay. And then over here, you've got a two to one turns ratio, so it's a four to one balance. This is your balanced right here. It could also be used as an un un if you want, uh, because this is connected straight through. But normally you'd make this balanced. And then you've got the, the braid coming back here. Now, let's look at a kind of a macro of this thing. You've got. Um, the antenna out here, you've got the balance and you've got coax here. This thing wants a counterpoise. And there are three ways you can kind of do that. One, you can connect this directly to a ground rod. Okay. Which would mean your antenna is going to go up something like an inverted V. Now note that it starts to radiate from here. Okay. The other thing you can do is run a wire from there down to a ground rod. This will act as a counterpoise and will behave weirdly at different wavelengths and so on, but it'll work. Another thing that you can do is run counterpoise wires out here that while they uh, up in the air somewhat different lengths. And these connect as your counterpoise. Now, uh, Ballon Designs points out that if these come down and lay on the ground, there will be capacitive coupling between that and the ground. Okay. Yeah, true. So what? I mean, it may work. You have to, with in a system like this, you're going to do a lot of experimenting for what's the best kind of ground. Now, my test coax that connects to the various antennas I test is 50 feet long. And it comes down, coax comes down to my ground rod. There's a small alpha delta lightning arrestor here. And then this goes into the house. Okay, so that's 50 feet long. That, it's what I use for all my antenna testing. It's a nice, flexible piece of RG213, very easy to move around and also very low loss because it's RG213. RG213. You could also use LMR400 Superflex. Um, which is very easy to move around if you're doing a lot of antenna testing when you finally put the thing in. Just use the cheaper LMR 400 for that. Okay, so here's what happens. This length acts, the shield acts as a counterpoise to the antenna going out here. That's not the antenna, that's the coax. Okay, so it's grounded right here before it goes into the shack. So this represents a ground point. This thing will go wild with all kinds of patterns on it and can work very well as a grounded counterpoise. Now, the problem that you have with this, uh, well, you don't have a problem with this, but I'll tell you where you will have a problem. If you, heaven forbid, delete the ground rod and lightning arrestor, which I absolutely admonish you not to do. But if you do that, then this outside is going to bring these outside currents all the way to your radio, <clears throat> which can cause all kinds of RFI problems. The solution for that is the grounding. There's one other solution I can show you. And that is this MFJ product right here, an MFJ915 RF isolator. Okay, you can put this down uh, either near where the coax comes into the house or even just before the radio. And then you get your nice counterpoise effect uh, from the coax uh, outer braid. Uh, but this thing is full of little ferrite beads to impede that current from going any further. Okay, so that would work too. So in summary, 
I'm thinking just ground the ballon to ground rod and use an external tuner and call it a day, you certainly can do that. That would work. But if you just ground the outer shield of the coax at your lightning arrestor or at the ground rod, and I'll admit I grounded my antenna before I put lightning arresters in there, um, it will take a lot of that extra noise away. So I think you're going to shape, Robert. So there you have it. Uh, appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, also, please check out dkessler.com uh, slash support for different ways that you can help finance this channel. Uh, financing does things like pay my uh, assistant who's holding the camera right now and doing the editing and uh, also paying the expenses of the channel and, and uh, helping things out there. So feel free to do that. Now, I know I always put in a plug for money, and that's because I need some money. But these videos are free. The information that's in them wants to be free. Okay, so although they're under the standard YouTube license, they're not Creative Commons, the fact is that you don't have to pay anything to watch these videos. They're free. So, uh, looking forward to seeing you next time. Until then, 73.